exactly to John Yu CPSV, and I see the you know importance of the topic, specifically like the uh, Siemens. So we are a global company. So lately, so in, in European countries, we have this new industry 4.0. So like with 500 million euro investment from the <coughs> government. So we see that uh, the academic results is going to be transferred to industry. So we see a lot of common interest here. So I'm happy to uh, give you a presentation. So from a little bit different perspective, so there's a, uh, instead of runtime or real-time performance issue, we talk more about the life cycle evaluation of the cyber system. So my focus is in the building area. So the last five years, that's our main focus, although my group, we also do the industrial area, like small manufacturing area. So, okay, I use ESTCP as kind of a program on the DOD because this work was uh, is supported by DOD from the ESTCP program. It's an energy security technology certification program. So the objective for us is to develop and validate our innovative energy asset management method so which can enable the building facility managers. The first, they have enough uh, awareness of how the performance of the asset. The second thing is we can give them a nice tool. They can easily to apply the energy planning or asset planning. So we give them optimization tool. They have the consideration of the whole life cycle cost. So I'll give you an overview of our methodology. So as I said, so the highlighted two bullets, the first is this system is totally wrong time management tool. So we all understand that the assets, the property characteristics are quite uh, dynamic. Uh, one is, you know, their energy performance keep on, you know, degrading after installation. The second thing is most of the systems, they have different uh, uh, performance at different uh, operating points, especially in chill loads, if you are running at the partial load, so usually a very low efficiency. The second uh, innovative part, actually I have to give the credits to, to my partner from Rutgers University. They bring in the business value into the asset planning. So basically we don't treat the assets the same because they don't equally contribute to your business values. Um, for the regular commercial buildings, uh, it's not that obvious when we apply this to the like, Department of Defense. Each of the buildings, they have support some missions. So mission from mission, they are quite different. So the creativity basically is different when we do the asset management. So other than that is some kind of well, the emphasis is like it's a knowledge-based energy asset. So which is quite important for a real system like you see. It's a complete holistic uh, database. We have the building information model. So we also align to today's the interoperability of the building information model, that activity. We can apply in uh, industrial foundation classes to derive our uh, building uh, energy management model. Last, uh, not the least, it's uh, the combination of model-based and data-driven based methodology. I think this is quite, uh, it's not, say just innovative, but it's very useful for the building energy management. So we have to uh, use this kind of, people talk about big data and data analytics. This is also most important point. When we start this industry 4.0, basically based on the availability of the data, who can we bring more business analytics used to be in the enterprise level. Now we bring them to the industrial automation level. So I'll give you, uh, yeah, so that is, we saw the, the big picture, okay? So uh, the beam here represented that the middle part is our uh, key component, building energy asset management. It has this long time continuous condition monitoring part where uh, it connects actually to the real time system. Here BMS represents the building management system. So in parallel, we see that our system also connect to a model. It's here we use the based on DOE Energy Plus model. It's not limited to Energy Plus model. So after what connect to the enterprise management, the building business objectives go directly to our decision-making process. So next, now I start with the, some work actually done by Rutgers University. 
how to develop the asset business value. So there is currently we have two ways to represent the business value of the asset. Uh, the first way is more like uh, to derive the ordinal criticality of the asset. Basically here we apply the approach called uh, analytical hierarchy process, try to map the uh, business objectives of the building down to the assets. This is the critical uh, techniques we use. Another way uses this uh, failing mode uh, effect analysis. So we divide the whole system into multi-layers, then map the critical allergy from the mission layer to the assets. Another uh, model I personally feel is very important is the direct economic value of the assets where we can use later in the optimization. So basically what we want to see is if we lose some asset or there is some failures or faults of the asset, what kind of business value we expect to lose. Okay? So basically this map to uh, multiple assets contribute to multiple control zones. Here, in building areas means more like uh, hardware control zones. Okay. So you can have multiple uh, occupants in a single zone. So what happens is, uh, it's a function. Here I just uh, uh, illustrate. This function is kind of uh, the, the loose of your productivity, okay? The, sum, the sum, uh, summation of all the occupants, the loose productivity will contribute to the business value loss. So later we call this penalty cost when we lose the asset. Okay. So some other techniques we use for the runtime uh, condition monitoring. So we apply this heat flow modeling to do the fault detection. <coughs> so basically, this is a model-based approach, but it's a simplified model. So the real-time data can fit into the my model. I can do consistency check because it's a flow. In addition to the fault and uh, like detection and diagnosis, we also monitor the condition of each asset specific for those uh, uh, kind of critical loads, I say, like the energy conversion components like trailers and fans. And some like energy distribution component here, here so it's more like a VAV box, all those shots and the mixing box. So we have different no way. Most of the definition kind of heuristic and physics based definition, but we do create create the, the single component performance can be aggregated to system level. So based on the asset replacement cost. So all this information will be monitored and show as in the human machine office to the business uh, to the building operators. Now we move to the final stage. We have to do the building asset, energy asset management optimization. As I said, we will look into the life cycle cost. So the problem will be stated like that. What is the best maintenance policy or investment plan for you for the next five years? Okay. So, but the overall cost has to include in the first is the total building energy consumption, which usually is excluded today. The second is the maintenance cost. That's the main focus of today's uh, on the energy asset uh, software. The third one actually, so we want to minimize the penalty cost. This is also ignored by the state of art uh, methodology. The last objective is by the end of this end year, we still want to uh, ma maximize all the assets performance. So this is represented a bit differently. So it's the degradation, we want to minimize the degradation. All other three objectives, we have the, the representation of the economic value form. Basically, you can aggregate them into the single objective function, but the last one is a bit different. So this is a multi-criteria objective function and optimization problem. The division variables are the maintenance policy. So I'll give you an example, like uh, most time we do the active maintenance, but here we talk about preventive maintenance. So it could be age-based, clock-based. So this kind of terminology probably you will understand. Read our paper later. So this is just show you the how the overall workflow like this optimization engine. So it's pretty detailed. So basically, our monitor give us the condition index. We go back to update the effective age of each asset. From there, we can run the reliability model to forecast the faults, alarms, and also the degradation of 
performance. All this value will be plugged into the energy plus. Okay, everyone now uh, we got this simulation. So ultimately, we can generate three costs. One is the energy cost, another is maintenance, and also penalty cost. So then we develop a software. This software is going to be yeah installed in DOD. So basically, it shows both offline and the runtime how the system will work. Give you a feeling of that software. This is a, the condition monitoring part. We have this plank hierarchy to show all the assets in the building. And we, for each asset, it takes that, let's show you the trend of the performance degradation. It can detect faults, shows alarms, and also show the actions <coughs> that fault on this asset. So this is the asset management part, basically. So this one, we, we only run the analysis. We, you can choose one asset. You have multiple options of to do the maintenance. You choose multiple years of run the system. This would give you the analysis result. What are the uh, maintenance costs, the energy costs, and penalty costs? From here, the uh, facility manager can conduct the planning for the asset maintenance. So this lastly, I want to talk a little about this project. So we uh, we are validate this software and demonstrate the energy saving result of this uh, beam to the DOD site. <coughs> right now we are working with Air Force Academy try to run this system on one of their recreational buildings. But they do have multiple zones, like including auditorium, ballrooms, and also offices. We consider they are of different missions. So we will show the result to DOD. So this is some kind of simulated results. So uh, the baseline number one is the reactive strategy, and all others are different maintenance methodology. So we get comparison bid. We have different energy impact, maintenance impact, and uh, and also the penalty impact. It's not very obvious here. So from here, this show the energy impact. Basically, we can say like if we do optimization one one asset, we can say twelve percent of electricity and uh, fifteen of the boiler gas if uh, compared to the maintenance cost also increased. Okay? So after we also do optimization on six assets. Some of them they kind of overlap, some of them they have neutral effect on each other. Anyway, so this is some result of, you know that we want to show this optimal policy for Chilla is preventive maintenance clock based type three every six months. Clock based means time driven. And type three is kind of very intensive maintenance, just like you maintain your car. You have plenty of options, you all check. And every six months, do this. This is kind of indication how a facility manager can take this as very useful uh, suggestions or advice for them to be planning. Okay, so that's it. So it's very quick presentation, but if you need to know more, because a lot of techniques we apply here, so we have papers that we can you ask, I can share with you. Okay? Sure. Uh, in your modeling, do you take into consideration that certain sources of energy can uh, raise the up and down? This is a propane with a lot of potential gas might go down, and over time you might switch from one source of energy to another? Yes, yes. This is considered even the different, for example, electricity, different rate structure is also considered. And we another purpose actually, we're also going to do short term operations recommendation. So like uh, when you should switch which sort of absorption or a centrifuge. So that is also included for short term operations. I'm wondering, um, how important is Yeah, yeah. So the whole thing is for us, okay, as a business, the main concern is the engineering process. The most time consuming is the engineering process. What happened is that uh, here, if we don't have uh, information available from gathering the data, develop model, I have three models to develop. It's really time consuming. It has to be specific for each building. But for this uh, project, we develop a tool 
which can automatically input the data in the database here. We I put good information models, so and we start with IFC, Industrial Foundation Class. But we understand that not most of the building, maybe only a couple of buildings with IFC model, but that could be the future trend. Something else, right now, we're also trying to connect to the DOD builder. This is, for example, existing asset management uh, tool. So it's based on MySQL database. We, our data can automatically import from there. 